Wow. All righty. We're up and live. Hello, Gun Nation. What's up, everybody? Hello. <laughs> Hello. Well, we already got uh, happy, happy uh, early birthday, Logan. Yep, happy birthday. Big 2-0. Should yeah. I remember that 100 years ago? I know. I, I remember that like 22 years ago. Makes uh, me yeah, Pistol, Pistol Pete said the chat hadn't even started and we have two thumbs down. Yeah, I guess people hate us. Yeah, right. I think it's more me. I think it's just my channel. So. Well, who can blame them? <laughs> Face for radio. It's all good, man. It's all good. It's all good. <clears throat> all right. So we got Pistol Pete. We got KS Gun Guy. We got Logan White. Big J. Craig. Uh, let's see here. Captain Phil. Jesus is God. Jesus is God already has a question. Those RIP rounds are terrible. They constantly have trouble feeding in my Beretta Pico 380. I knew it. That's what... That's what they said. That's because you have a Beretta, a Beretta Pico 380. I'm totally kidding. I'm totally kidding. That's what they're talking about. Those little fingers on them were grabbing, and they wouldn't feed in some pistols. So here we go. Uh, we got Gerald. Well, and I, and I, go, ahead. go ahead. I was just going to say, I understand that the Beretta is a little bit finicky as far as the 380 goes. Yeah, could be. Um, let's see here. Captain Phil. Um, we got... Uh, Big Will. Uh, let's see here. We got Rich, 4150. He hopes this is a uh, Gen 5 gun chat or Glock 5 gun chat. Well, he's doing such a great job generating all that love that I figured <laughs> we'd just leave it up to him. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Rich. And do, do me a favor, Rich. Keep all of your little snowflakes on your side, pal. Yeah, we don't want them coming <laughs> over here. Uh, we got Keenan. We got CWB. Uh, we got Paradox in the house. What's up, Paradox? Dave Ports. Yep. And also, uh, I want to give uh, Paradox a shout out for hooking me up on that uh, 380 or that 308 ammo. It's pretty good. Nice. Yeah, that was a great grab, man. Glad to have it. Nick Scott is in the house. <laughs> we got 15, 15 on and watching. You want to kick it off now, or you want to wait a couple minutes more? No, let's start it up. It's eight oh one, man. I'm not going to get longer than nine. So fire it up. <clears throat> All right. So uh, we have a diverse group of topics tonight. The first topic we're actually going to be talking about is what everybody's probably been seeing on the news with uh, the aftermath of Irma down in the Caribbean and in Florida. And that's not taking away anything that's happened in Texas, but I think Texas actually rallied around each other very well where we're seeing now, um, especially in Florida and especially in the Caribbean, uh, people are looting and going crazy. Um, you know, some nursing home down in Florida, actually in Hollywood, Florida today, they found eight of their patients dead because of complications from the heat because they have no electricity and uh, dehydration and everything. So one of the things that I was kind of thinking about is uh, when you have events like this, you know, it, it, to me, and that's just my only opinion, but uh, to me, it really stresses the importance of having that Second Amendment. Now, obviously, nursing homes are different. But um, if you read some of the stories and you heard what was happening in some of the Virgin Islands, you were going to realize that, you know, those people were absolutely defenseless to these roving bandits um, of just lunatics, of animals going around place to place, just robbing people blind. And uh, I can't stress enough, you know, that we need to have a Second Amendment for obvious reasons. It's not about, you know... Um, I don't know, maybe in a modern sense, it's not about raising a militia, so to speak. It's about protection of one's own property now, you know, and I think that's extremely important, you know, and I think sometimes that message gets lost because obviously you have the extreme gun owner who says we should own everything, including bazookas, flamethrowers, machine guns, tanks, howitzers, so on and so forth. And then you have the ultra conservative anti-gun uh, wackadoos who don't want any guns at all. But I think the message has to be more or less, you know what, it's not about what type of guns is about personal protection, personal ownership of them, because you're seeing now these, these situations, the system wasn't designed to be able to manage these types of emergencies in a local and even in the state level. Um, and I think it just shows that more important, uh, of how, how important that second amendment is. You want to go KS or you want me to? 
Well, I, I mean, I would absolutely echo that. Uh, I, I mean, you know, we've all said that uh, you can't carry a cop in your back pocket and uh, your first your first and best line of defense is yourself and, and taking care of your loved ones and, and uh, to an extent taking care of your neighbors as best that you can, especially those who can't maybe take care of themselves as well. Um, and I think it is, I think it is absolutely just kind that people take advantage of, of tragedies and horrible situations. Well, people are trying to collect their their uh, their loved ones and their belongings and trying to, to reassemble some semblance of their lives. And, you know, somebody comes along and, uh, and, and <laughs> takes advantage of that. I mean, that it, you know, it just, um, it's the, the seedier side of, uh, of some people in our country, unfortunately. And, and that's why, again, I mean, I think we have to fall back on our Second Amendment rights and, and our ability to um, responsibly uh, and thoughtfully uh, uh, protect ourselves and, uh, uh, and exercise our rights when we need to. Yeah. And I, you know, I basically second both of those. And also I'll throw another thing, you know, as business owners, if you remember back during the Ferguson riots, and all this other mess that was happening, there were business owners, you know, protecting their business with AK-47s, et cetera, uh, ARs, and people weren't coming on their area, you know, and this, this guy who owns this sporting goods store, you know, the poor guy wasn't there because of course it's a natural disaster and he's taking, you know, his family out of the situation and protecting it. And they're, you know, stealing freaking tennis shoes, not baby diapers, not wipes, not food or water, stealing freaking tennis shoes. You know, I mean, this shit's got to stop. You know, this is right. out of control. And people are just looking at an opportunity. You know, I mean, I remember Katrina. People were walking with big screen TVs on their shoulder, and they had water up to their damn chest. You know, it's just, just ridiculous. I don't know what the hell's wrong with people. Well, they get they get trapped into this idea that the only way to, to measure success is by all the, the garbage that you own, whether it's televisions, sneakers cars that kind of stuff you know yeah right or turning around and trying to sell it for a buck although i, I don't think anybody's looking to buy tv right now um yeah, but right. uh but no you're exactly right you're you're exactly right yeah now we did have a quick question uh jesus is god and it's kind of came up a couple of times here uh for the 380 you know and and we were going to get into this also for the defensive carry uh but you know for a 380 you know, what do you prefer if you're going to carry a 380 or if you have, what do you prefer for a carry around? And we were kind of going to get into seasonal. Like, do you change your ammo for seasonal carry? So what would you carry in a 380? I, I'm not carrying a 380, period. I know. I just said if you were. I'm not. I'm not. I don't, I'm, honestly, dude, I don't even want to talk about 380s, man. All right. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I don't carry them. I have no desire to carry them. I still don't understand the rationale behind a 380. You know, if you're going to go for, th look at the prices on guns that are 380s. You can buy uh -huh. a, a nine millimeter for the same exact price. If not, yeah. in, some in some cases, cheaper. Yeah. So All I, right. I just, yes. What do you got? I don't get it. Well, I, I've got a different look on 380. Uh, there are times where um, it's it's extremely convenient. I mean, you know, obviously they, they make 380s that are very much designed to be pocket guns, which is great. Captain Phil brought up a great point. He got a Glock 42 for his wife, and she loves it. It might be exactly the right fit for her to be still very small and concealable, but big enough to be an enjoyable gun to shoot. Um, and the recoil isn't, uh, isn't, uh, too bad because let's face it, you know, from a 42 to a 43, if you've got experience with both of those, there's certainly a significant difference in felt recoil. Um, well, both manageable, there's just, there's a big difference. Um, you know, I, I have pretty nasty arthritis and there will come a day when, when I'm not going to be able to shoot some of the guns that I really want to shoot, I'm sure. Uh, and I'll have to start considering that sort of thing as well. So, so there are a lot of there are a lot of pluses to 380 in terms of uh, carry ammo, and and I have carried a Glock 42 uh, over the years many times. Um, I generally stuck with ball ammo, um, although there are some hollow points that are good. Like Big Johnson said, from a penetration standpoint, I, I think uh, most of the science says that uh, uh, that generally speaking, ball ammo is going to do a little bit better, but not by a whole lot. Um, and and you know. It, it comes back to the same thing. Carrying a, carrying a 380 is better than not carrying a gun. So, uh, you know, there's, there's that philosophy as well. Yeah. And if you look at, you know, if you were to carry a 380, now granted, if, if it's really nice hot weather, most people are in shorts and, you know, t-shirts and things like that. Yeah. They are easy to carry because they're small. But also if you're going with an ammo at that time, you might choose a full metal jacket. However, 
if you're wearing like what 1776 has on, you know, thicker clothing, a coat, things like that, three or standard 380 hollow point just won't penetrate as deep. So that's why I always went with a full metal jacket. You know, I'd rather punch a hole through the front and the back uh, than just, you know, go six inches in. Um, you know, you want maximum at least 12 to 14 inch penetration, you know, for the round and full metal jacket will, will get it done. So hell, on a 380, I'd probably, you know, for the most part, I carry 380 uh, uh, FMJ all the time. Hey, uh, DJ did have a question a little while ago about the Walther Creed, and we do have a, a Walther Creed expert here on the panel tonight, and he was just kind of curious about it, did, wanted to know a little bit more information about it. Uh, the Walther Creed, I think, is an excellent budget gun. Um, you know, I know a lot of people will sit there and say, well, what about the Canik? Uh, you know, I mean, it's it's really hard to, to argue with that point because the Canik uh, TP9 SF Elite is very cheap. Uh, now, whether or not it's reliable, that's, you know, it depends who you ask. But the Creed, um, the thing I liked about the Creed was ergonomically it felt very similar to a PPQ, albeit it's a little thicker and a little bit uh, top, more top heavy than I would say the PPQ. Uh, the trigger was is excellent on it. Um, you know, it's a, it's a hammer, uh, hammer strike. It's a weird trigger because it's a, a, a pre-cocked hammer. So it's almost like a single action hammer, even though they call it a double action only. So when you go and you pull that trigger back, you'll see the hammer bob back and then it just breaks really smooth. Um, you know, is it going to be an ideal carry gun? No, I would say no. I think it's a little too big for that. But if it's going to be like a range gun, home defense gun, I, I don't see why you, would, you know, you wouldn't consider something like that. And you can probably find them very cheap because they, from what I've seen, they haven't sold very much of them. Um, you know, obviously when you have a rebate on the PPQ that they just had, it didn't really make sense to go with the Creed. But if it's really going to be your first gun and you don't have a carry license and it's going to be for range and home protection and that kind of stuff, I, I would recommend it. I don't have any problem with it. It does have a nice trigger. I pulled my gun store and like you said, the pre-cocked, it's actually a very nice trigger. Yeah. I mean, it's not PPQ-ish, but it is a super nice trigger. For uh, it's, it's a different trigger that, you know, yeah. the whole system is different, but um, shooting it, I mean, there's very little recoil on it. As a matter of fact, the first time I shot it, um, the trigger was so soft and so light that I actually I actually pulled the trigger thinking it was going to break a little further back and it actually broke sooner and it kind of startled me a little bit uh, yeah. because it's just a, it's it's an odd trigger but it's super light for a ver for a double action hammer uh, it was a very light trigger. Yeah, we do have a question uh, real quick. You know the SD9 VE, which yep. is the Smith and Wesson budget uh, friendly pistol. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, it's a good gun. Uh, for the money, it uh, it's a it's a decent quality build. I mean, it's not going to be as refined as uh, as some other guns out there, uh, but uh, but I think it's a good gun. And, and frankly, after testing the MP 2.0, I would probably rather have a, an SD9 VE. Uh, you're crazy. You. Yeah, you're so I'm nuts. I am I'm in the minority, and I I'm totally yeah. proud. This is the same guy, this guy who has wet dreams about the APX. I mean, come on, man. You know, don't judge me. Don't judge me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, heck, I don't think the SD9BE is a bad pistol at all. Matter of fact, a buddy of mine has one, and he put the spring kit and the trigger in it, uh, both kits. And, man, it's actually a really nice shooting pistol, 16 rounds, you know, plus one. So really can't yeah. go wrong with it. And it does have, you know, it is very Glockish. We all know that as far as the setup, mm -hmm. but it has the 1911 grip and hell, I shot it and I thought it was a very nice shooter. I believe that's Rich's Gen 5 Glock, if, if I'm not yes, mistaken. Yes, it is. It is. Yes, yes. And he was, wow! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody was excited about it. Right. So uh, the other thing um, that you were kind of alluding, alluding to before was the issue about um, the carry ammo. You know, one of the things that I was asking these two clowns earlier today, or kind of discussing with them is, now that seasons are changing, especially for us up here in the Northeast, probably in the Midwest like KS, not so much in, you know, the hellhole of Texas. <laughs> but, uh, you know, for us, it's getting a little we're bit free. chillier. So you're dressing a little bit heavier. So I started thinking about today whether or not it would make sense to up your caliber. So, like, let's say, you know, spring, summer, even maybe fall, you're carrying um, a 9 millimeter. Should you turn over to, like, a 40 or 45 in the winter time so that if you do have to shoot someone hopefully you don't have to but if you do uh you get that penetration through the clothing now obviously somebody's not going to be wearing a suit of armor but you know if you got a, a thick coat on a thick sweatshirt on 
uh, you know, those layers definitely create resistance uh, in the round. So I don't know. I was kind of curious what you guys thought about that. Um, I'll take this one. Me personally, you know, now you're dealing with thicker clothing. And if you upgrade, you're going to be dealing with a heavier bullet, you know, say 45 is 230 grain. It, that moves slower. Right. Okay. Then 124 grain, nine millimeter. We can all agree on that. I would rather have the speed, uh, the penetration through the clothing, um, thicker, you know, thicker clothing, the 45 granted, if it's going through a couple of coats or coats and undershirts and things like that, um, it's heavier grain bullet. It's going to be slower. Uh, I want it to zip on through there, you know, so I'd rather punch more holes. And also when you're usually going with the 45, uh, you're losing capacity where you can have more capacity with, you know, a nine millimeter, even if you're dealing with a single stack, et cetera, um, you know, for convenience of carry. Um, but full size, you know, hell, you're going to have a lot of ammo on board. So yeah. I would still stay with the nine um, and I would still stay with the 124 grain. I wouldn't change me personally. Mm -hmm. What about you, Cass? Um, I, you know, I'm I'm totally comfortable with a nine millimeter. Uh, that that's fine around here, generally speaking. I mean, yeah, people definitely do layer a little bit more, but uh, but for for what it needs to do, I think generally speaking, um, people aren't wearing armor usually, and those who are have a different intention, and you're probably in a little bit more trouble uh, with that. But uh, uh, but I, I think nine millimeter is perfectly fine. Uh, I I. I've said in previous chats, I have no interest in a 40 and, and I, I'm fine with a 45. It's okay, but uh, I'd rather have more rounds. And uh, uh, although I generally carry a single stack, but still I'd rather have more rounds. Uh, I know, right? <laughs> uh, no, nine millimeters perfectly fine. I think at least for this area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about you? Uh, I'm just sticking with the nines. I, I don't have any forties, forty fives, and I'm not about to buy a gun just to, you know, change out, you know, ammo for the winter time screw that i figured yeah, i figured if i can at least hit you dead center you know i know in my mag restricted state of 10 rounds if i can at least get three to four of them in the same area i'll rip through those clothes and then uh, i'll get some penetration with those bullets so hopefully you know, and if a person you know really wants to and you know cajun brought it up you could do the under underwood nine millimeter extreme penetrators or you could go with a nine nine millimeter plus p if you choose it, I don't shoot pressurized rounds. I don't, you know, that's, that's just me. Uh, but, um, you know, I say whatever you feel comfortable with, by all means, shoot it. Yep. Let's see. Uh, I saw somebody asked about the Pete. Oh, who is that? Michael. Michael, Michael Di Maria. He said, any word uh, from CZ? The only word I got so far is that they received the gun. Actually, if you guys aren't aware, I actually sent my P10 back to CZ so they can kind of diagnose what's going on, if anything, with the gun. Um, you know, uh, it, it's tough to say, you know, uh, there's a lot of people out there that own the P10s and I would tell you that everything I've seen about 98% of everything has been very good. Um, I would tell you up until about 800 rounds, my gun was, was perfect, no issues. And then it just had a few issues. And so now hopefully, um, they'll be able to do something with it and just kind of diagnose it and send it back to me, um, in good condition. That's all I'm asking for because I really like the gun and I don't want to lose. That's not the, that, it's not like the Canic. The Canic, I was good, glad to see it go. Uh, the P10 uh, is a gun that I would like to keep because it's a really, really fine firearm. Yeah. And um, Live for Wild is, you know, as far as uh, ammo, he's just saying shot, uh, shot placements, everything, which is true, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, then we were going to get into the, uh, the, uh, well, you had brought up the uh, M&P. Yeah. yeah. So uh, obviously there was a big announcement and, uh, you know, well, I don't know if you want to call it a big announcement, but uh, it was um, a sort of an announcement because what, what channel was it on? Cabela's or who was it? Yeah, Brownells. That was Brownells. Brownells had that video on the new M&P 2.0 compact. And uh, if you watch the video, they did show that it is, it is the same size. Um, as a Glock 19. So I think for a lot of Smith and Wesson people, that's pretty much what a lot of people have been waiting for. I, I know there was some, and including myself, I was a little bit turned off by the M&P 2.0. I felt like they kind of missed the boat on that by making it the same size. It really should have gotten a little bit smaller. But, you know, I have one coming in. I'm waiting for it. Uh, obviously, I'll probably be waiting until I'm 55. Hopefully, I'll get it soon. But, um, you know, I've already begun to feel out there in the world where I can get a really good price on a on a compact because that's probably a gun that i'm gonna get because uh you know i know a lot of people don't like the triggers on them and i'm from what i don't really care for that hinge trigger 
you throw a little uh, shoe on there, it makes it look nice and pretty, and it feels good in your finger. I, I think that gun will be pretty damn good, to be honest with you. Yeah, you put that sweet little trigger on the M&P, and that thing's awesome. That's like four pounds, three ounces, and yeah. it's it's really an awesome trigger. Yeah, and, uh, and it was like 90 bucks for the whole entire kit with the trigger. Yeah, hopefully it'll be a relatively decent price. I think they're going to try to price it around the same realm as a Glock uh, Gen 5. So I think that's about five something. So I think around 549 or something, something like that. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I, so, so I've been doing, obviously did the video on the, the 2.0 and, uh, and I've shot it multiple times against several different guns. Um, I'll probably do a couple more videos on it, uh, because I really wanted to like this gun. I really did. And, and I, I, I recall liking the 1.0 reasonably well. I can't, I, I just, I, I've struggled to get into this gun and, and, uh, and part of it's me, uh, part of it's the way I shoot and wrapping my finger around because my fingers are kind of long. So it doesn't work very well for me, uh, from that standpoint. Um, and, uh, and, and it just, I mean, it's gritty and I, just, I would like to see the compact, but I have absolutely no interest in getting into it after, after testing this guy. Um, uh, it's just not, uh, not really for me. Jeez. Yeah. Um, Aaron's asking what trigger this is. Um, it's in the video. I put the part number in the M&P video. It's, they call it the 1911 uh, sear trigger for the M&P 9C. It fits all M&Ps. And it's the full little, you know, it's got the do, doohickey in it, but it doesn't bend. But, okay. yeah, it's really a really yeah. a great trigger. And if you guys go onto that Apex site, what you're going to find is that the 2.0s, are a little different on the drop-in kits and stuff. Yeah. So you just got to consider that. But it, at least they have them. They don't have them for Gen 5 Glocks. <laughs> just saying. I, you know what? I, I, I got to say, and, and since you brought that up, and I'm kind of glad oh, you here, did. Here we go. Um, here we go. A, a, a very large channel just did a review on the on the Glock Gen 5, and I love this large channel. So, uh, <laughs> so I'm not, I'm, Right? So I'm not picking on Hickok at all because, again, I, I've been a fan of his for a long, long time, and I enjoy everything he does. Um, and, uh, and I agree with probably 85% of what he said. I mean, I think he was spot on with almost everything and he's a, he's a Glock guy. I mean, that's, you know, he, I would say he was like the quintessential Glock fanboy for a long time. So, th so it was pretty meaningful to hear him die or uh, kind of dissect the gen five, right. but he was saying that there was no noticeable difference in the trigger. And that was the one big thing where I would say, Although it is still a Glock trigger, and I've said this in, in both the videos I've had with the, the Gen 5s, it is, to me, noticeably different. It is smoother. It's a little bit lighter. And, and uh, there isn't as much. Well, he was exactly right. There, there are not quite as much wall as there used to be. But I think it glides through a little bit smoother. Um, and I think it is still, I think it is still as as well, as crisp as a Glock trigger can be, which has never been, it's not like a P10 or anything like that. Right. Uh, but uh, but I think the trigger is better. And although I love tinkering with the guns and everything, aside from a bit of a polish job, I don't think the Gen 5 really needs much else. And it's turned out to actually be a good gun with all of its faults and all of the things that it didn't end up being for, for whatever everybody wanted. It's, it's actually turned out to be a pretty good gun. Both of them have the 17. In fact, has uh, turned into a fantastic gun. All right. So here's my question to you on that one though. Uh, do you think that that gen five 19, cause I know you like the 17 better. Um, do you think that 19 is better than the, the gen four 19? Well, I'll say no, but the but I think the only reason I say that is because right now the the Gen Four you can do anything with, and you can truly customize it the way you want. So it's got a it's got a, a leg up. However, if if you gave me two plain Jane Glocks and I didn't have some of the background that I have with Glocks, I mean, I you guys all know this. I was a Glock fanboy for a long time, uh, reformed. Um, I. I, I probably wouldn't be able to tell you the difference between the two other than the Gen 5 um, feels a bit better in the grip except for the very bottom by your pinky where that little cutout is and the trigger feels a tiny bit better. Other than that, I don't think I would care if I did if I wasn't who I am right now. I just don't think I'd care. Okay. I also, I also think you're a little biased towards Glock, so I think that... Yeah, we do have a question. Cajun Tigers, it says, do you do trigger jobs on all your guns or do you leave them stock? What it was. So go ahead, Big Johnson. What do you do? Uh, I've got a few with trigger jobs and some I leave like the PPQ completely stock, you know, et cetera. M and P's. I usually change them. Um, 
you know, when some of the competition guns have been changed, but you know, it just depends on the gun, you know, we all, I think we all have a little bias towards that too. And it doesn't have to be a three pound trigger. That's not what it's about. It just needs to be not gritty or, you know, nasty feeling for me. What, what was the, I, I'm sorry. Was it was it the uh, do you do trigger jobs on all your guns? Was that the yes. question? Yes. Uh, no. Um, and in fact, since I've started doing the uh, all the YouTube stuff and spending more time with more guns and 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 kind of bringing in and out guns more often, I don't have a lot of time to do that. I don't have the money to do it because uh, <laughs> I I would I would rather buy another gun than worry about buying a bunch of accessories for one gun. I'd rather have two guns. That's just me. It's better for the channel. Um, and, uh, and so I have, I have w my gen four Glock 19. That's kind of my, my play gun. I do, I can do whatever I want with it. I can kind of fart around with it. I can take it apart and all the different parts that I have. I mean, that, that's kind of my, uh, my, my screw around with gun. Otherwise I generally leave everything as stock as I can because it makes more sense to test and it's more fair after getting called out, Mateo, you remember this, uh, after getting called out with the, uh, uh, the Vickers uh, uh, Glock versus the P10. I really, I mean, it, it was meaningful to to get all that feedback because I kind of thought, you know, everybody's right. I need to keep these as plain Jane as I can to keep them as as level as possible. And whatever comes out of the box is what you get. Um, you know, whatever you decide to do after the fact, to you and great. Would love to put fun triggers and everything, but I I can't do it. Yeah, yeah I know. I don't do anything really on any of my guns. Uh, and, you know, aside from like sites, you know, maybe the recoil and guide rod systems, but, um, I don't do any triggers on them. You know, I, I don't, yeah. I mean, do you really need one? Uh, it's debatable. I think at best, uh, I think if I do like the M and P full size, I probably will do something on that. Uh, just because I don't like the hinge on the trigger. It's not because I want a better trigger. It's just, I want a better shape of a trigger. I just, I'm not a, fan, a fan of it at all. Um, you know, I'll probably do a trigger on the um, battle worn flag Glock because I, I want to get something that kind of goes with the whole thing uh, and make that kind of like the uh, the uh, the frame on the wall Glock, so to speak, you know, because it's uh, such a cool looking Glock. But, um, you know, I don't really do anything, nothing special. Yeah, and I know that I did it and you did it on our uh, P320 because we had a question here uh, yeah. and KS did it too. We did, I put the uh, enhanced, you know, Apex, just the, trigger assembly it doesn't you know it just changes the poundage because i do prefer the flatter trigger versus the curve trigger yeah yeah and i did the uh the advanced one so it supposedly dropped it down two point pounds ah. but i did the semi curved trigger not the flat one and uh, i really liked it it's a nice trigger but uh that has since uh, been returned to apex and uh we are still all waiting for our emails from sig sour so who knows yeah yeah, it is crackling in and out. I guess KS, they're saying your your uh, microphone's crackling in and out every once in a while. Well, okay, so so I, I have a kind of a funny story with that. First, I'm I am trying out a new microphone, so that might be part of the problem. But I also learned that my uh, my internet signal was downgraded by what used to be Time Warner Cable. Now it's Spectrum. Oh. Uh, so every an hour and a half on the phone with them and uh, and starting out very nice and, and ending up uh, relatively belligerent uh, I, I've decided to go with uh, Google Fiber so I'll have Google Fiber and, and it'll hopefully that will hopefully that'll correct it so uh, my apologies for the uh, for the microphone cracking okay. no worries no worries um, we're used to a 30 minute mic check with with 17 anyway yeah you wish I got it down to an art now. It's under 10 seconds. There you go. All right. Um, and then, um, yeah, Will Shepard put a lighter hammer spring on his Sphinx. Um, you know, and then they're saying CZs have great triggers. Yeah, some of them do. Some of them are, you know, pretty stout in the double action. But, of course, you can change that. So. Yeah, and uh, uh, one other thing is uh, I was talking to uh, Big Johnson about this, and I may have talked about it with the KS. I'm not exactly sure, but I can't remember. Uh, I don't think I'm going to buy that uh, Strike B. I know that sounds crazy, um, but as I sat back and I kind of looked at it and I looked at the the most important factor, which was the price tag on it, um, I just, I don't know, man. There's just something that makes me ill about spending, you know, $800 on one handgun. 
Um, so I don't, I don't think I'm going to carry through with it, man. I just, you know, whatever, dude, I don't care. I got plenty of handguns. There's plenty of other handguns out there. If I don't buy that, I can go out and buy myself two other ones that I actually like as well. So yeah. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't fully decided yet, but I think I'm moving away from that. Unless somebody wants to donate one to me, then I'll take it. Maybe they'll just sponsor you. Probably yeah, probably not. Don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> probably not. Yeah. I mean, I think it is going to be a really nice gun, you know, uh, like the Arsenal Strike One. I mean, that thing's awesome. But um, yeah, I hear, I hear what you're saying. There's a lot of issues with it too. I mean, you know, first of all, we don't know the reliability. We don't know what is going to be there, you know. And for me, the big thing after dealing with Century Arms was customer service. I don't even know how the customer service is going to be if there's something wrong with the firearm. So yeah. I think I'm going to move away from that. So now well, Walden Cures is calling me a cheap bastard. <laughs> well, they've already delayed it also, you know. I mean, you should have already had it. but Well, they, they delayed didn't. it. They're available now. Like, you can get them now. Like, I'm on a waiting list. I put money down on it. I can yeah, get no, money. I knew that, but... But, um, you know, it's it's actually, they're being shipped over, supposedly, so they're actually not going to be available till November. And uh, that was another reason I was kind of iffy about it, because they want their money before the gun actually comes in. And, you know, I don't really feel like handing over almost a grand in cash uh, for a handgun sight unseen, you know what I mean? Right. Right. So that's just yeah. Me. Uh, Triple C says, isn't it just a Glock copy? And I said, aren't they all? Well, I mean, it's 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 actually, you know, looking at it, it's um, it reminds me a lot of the P10 on the grip because of the way the grip looks. Um, you know, they've got some funky uh, cuts on the slide, so that makes it real low. Uh, the one thing I never really liked was the beaver tail on it on the back. It just looks like they glued it on. But, uh, you know, the salient arms trigger is in, in it. You know, I mean, it, it takes Glock sights even though the magazines are proprietary, but, um, you know, it, it just, it's really nice. I'd love to own one, but I just, I, like I said, I just can't stomach spending $800 on one handgun. And yes, I am cheap. Or I like to say frugal. <laughs> frugal. Mm. <laughs> right. Okay. Why buy one when I can have two? There you go. Well, I, I would still like to get my hands on the Hudson, but uh, I don't know if that gun is ever going to actually make it to market. I know it's like you've had no update, no nothing. Nope they they have said hardly anything on their Facebook, their website. If you send them an email, you just get a generic uh, email back that says, "Hey, thanks for contacting us," and and it's coming June. You know, I, they don't have an update that, so who knows? Yeah, and I think um, you know they're getting this is the new Strike B. Okay, Arsenal has the Strike One which is the older one, like Bald and Curious has, and Yankee Marshall has one, yes, but these are the new strikes. Yeah, these are, um, the, these are the compact uh, handguns they're making. Yeah. And well, they're, they're not really out yet. Nice. Real nice. I mean, yeah, they are. Uh, Paradox says he gave up on the Hudson, so should you. <laughs> I, I'm I'm sort of I'm starting to feel that way too, paradox. And and frankly, I've been sort I've set aside some money to to kind of have that ready. And I feel like what purpose of this? I mean, you know, I don't know. I don't know how I feel yet. Part of me is still very excited to get my hands on it. Part of me also thinks, what the hell am I doing? I have no idea. Yeah, that's not for me. No thanks. Yeah, and you don't know the reliability on it. You don't know how it's going to hold up. You don't know anything about it. So, Plus, I want to. I do want to see how this uh, this full size M and P shoots, and then I can decide on that compact. More importantly, I know Walther has something in the works for the fall, so um, you know I don't want to miss out on that because if I buy that Strike B, that's going to be it for a while, man. That's an expensive gun. Yeah. So for me, if I can hold off, get you know hold the urge back and uh, and just wait a little longer, there might be a nice little surprise by Walther by the time this year is over. Pops Quest, thanks, brother. He's stopping by to say hi. He's getting some tactical sleep. Sweet. Good night, Pops. <laughs> so, uh, um, uh, Gig uh, was uh, mentioning something called the Life Card. Have you guys ever heard of this? It's a single shot 22 that looks like a credit card or something like yeah, that. I've seen that before. No. Oh, that was, yeah, I did see that. Yeah, I'll pass. <laughs> I'll just carry, I'll I'll just carry a gun that actually looks like one. Yeah, well, right. What's, well, like, this is the 9C. Here's my hand. So, yeah, imagine me trying to hold that little 22 thing. I'd blow my finger off, so I'm out. 
It's more silly than the double barrel 1911. No way, dude. That Arsenal 1911 is badass. Oh my that god. That thing is freaking badass. You talk about the double barrel one? Yes. Jeez. I, I think Vborg is confused. Vborg, I did not win the damn knife. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just, you know, I I don't really enter any of these, but whenever somebody says, and I'll give you a knife, I'm in. I don't have a knife and I'm not gonna buy one. I refuse to. I was actually yeah. looking the other day. Um I was looking the other day at knives and uh, I was gonna get one and then I, I was like, I'm not getting the knife. I'm not not doing it. So dude, I'll send you I'll send you a knife. How about that? You need a damn knife. <laughs> you know what? I have the same spider co I've had since nineteen ninety four and it's still in good shape. It still works. I probably I probably won't ever buy another knife. So let's see. Yeah. Captain Phil is asking my preferred size for the Steyr for carry. It's funny that you say that, sir. I was actually carrying my Steyr uh, this past weekend, and I was carrying the M9. Um, I'll tell you, the S9 is uh, is awesome because of the shorter grip, but I, I concealed that M9 with zero problems. Um, and I will tell you, I was wearing the, um, oh, my God, the Vetter, the Vetter belt, the new Vetter belt with the uh, Cobra buckle. Th I'm telling you guys, that thing is pretty badass. I mean, that gun didn't move an inch with that friggin' belt on. Um, and uh, I was—I had a Vetter holster with it, of course, and uh, it was perfect. Uh, you couldn't even see it. I was—it was riding a little bit high. Absolutely perfect. The M9. If you're gonna, you know, want a full-size grip, go with the M9. That's just my opinion. Yeah. I'm actually getting an L9, and I'm gonna try to carry that bad boy too, because the same size grip, just longer barrel. Nice. I'm a Benchmade fan. Nice. I, I Bench, Benchmade and Kershaw. Um, I have to echo the uh, sentiment about the uh, Cobra belts. Um, I'm, I'm seeing those as well, and I, I've got to say they, they're absolutely fantastic. I mean, they're comfortable. The one thing, the, the buckle kind of sticks out a little bit. I don't know if you've noticed that. Um, so I wear mine more on the side, um, so that that helps a little bit. So it's not sticking out in front quite so much. Really? But uh, yeah, uh, yeah, but uh, but it, it otherwise is extraordinarily comfortable. Yeah, I didn't I didn't notice that issue. Are you sure you got it on the right way? Well, I put it around my waist. I hope oh, so. Really? No, I thought you put it on your forehead, you dumbass. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. <laughs> uh, Word on my head. head. He put a tourniquet on his head. There right. you go. Oh, speaking of tourniquet, I wore I won a shooter's giveaway, and um, I donated it to uh, Glock 17. Passed oh, it on. Well, nice. What did you win? The other day. The, what the what day day. did you win? Oh, it was a tourniquet. It was back to blue patches, okay. stickers, t-shirts, some other stuff. And I, I, I have all that. I mean, I've got back to blue holsters and everything. So I just wanted to pass it on and Glock 17 had signed up for it also. Yeah. So I passed it on to him. Yeah. I don't, I, like I said, I don't yeah, really, I've never, go ahead. I've never really, uh, I haven't had one of the belts, those better type belts like you guys have. I have, I have never used one. So, you know, with the Cobra type buckle and stuff like that. So I'm not it's, real, it's, I mean, I'm familiar with them. I just personally have never worn one. You know, it's, uh, <laughs> I, I will tell you that I do still like my Core Essentials belt, um, probably above all just because of the ratchet system in there. Um, I know that um, Core Essentials is coming out with a, what they call their tactical version. And uh, I'm looking forward to that um, because, you know, I really like the Core Essentials belt. Um, you can wear it for anything, really, for dress, for carry. Um, and I just like the system because, you know, you know how it is. You know, one day you feel nice and skinny. The next day you may feel a little fat and pudgy. So you got to adjust your belt a little bit, you know. And, uh, you know, I think that works great. Uh, the thing I liked about the Cobra belt with uh, from Vetter is that with the Vetter clip on the holster, it just – it fits perfectly over the belt. So, I mean, there's zero movement, yeah. you know, and I think that's where the big, huge plus is on it. Um, I think it's size a little small. I got an extra large, um, but I'd worry that an X, a double X, which I would never ever think of wearing, um, may have had a little extra room, but I had plenty of room on it. So I didn't have any issues yeah. with it. Yeah, we do have a question in all seriousness. 88 is asking you guys think Such gets paid to say crap about certain guns. I was watching him the other day. I like the dude. He loves everything. Uh, you know, I, there was a video once that I saw on YouTube where, and I don't know who did it. I can't remember. It was a bigger channel, obviously bigger than ours. Uh, maybe not as big as KS's, but it's bigger than Shut mine up. and uh, Big Johnson's. And uh, he was going over the tight. I, I, you know, I hate to say this because I know uh, Wick is going to get pissed. It was Yankee Marshall who did it, where he, he went through the types of YouTube channels oh, are, yeah. that are out there. 
Yeah. And uh, he said that there are people out there who do reviews to do like infomercials. So there's never a negative that you could say about it. And I think that some channels do that. You know, I, I, mm -hmm. I don't because I don't care. I don't get anything from anyone. I mean, I get sites from um, Ameriglo. They usually hook me up with sites and they're, they've been very awesome to me. And, but I'll tell you that I always tell you if I get something for free, I, Hey, I got this from them. Um, but if it's, if it's something that sucks, I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to tell you to buy something if it's garbage. Yeah. Um, and for guns, I mean, what gun would I not like? I, I, I like all guns, but at the same time, I can understand where you're coming from with that because it's always, this is the greatest gun. And then five minutes later he makes a video and it's, Oh, this is the greatest gun. You know, I would just like to hear both sides of it. What's good. And what's bad and then say well, i'll let you decide you know because that's how i approach it you know i i know what i like it doesn't matter what i like you have to make that decision ultimately that's why when i got turned on to the steyr i i couldn't speak highly of it any more than i have it's a great handgun i have not had any issues with this gun whatsoever i would recommend it to every shooter because of the way your hand fits on it um if it was a piece of garbage i would say this gun's a piece of garbage you know, when I had the failures with the P10, I had people come at me with hate about, oh, you just did, did, did. No, dude, I'm just telling you what I found, like it or not. That's just the way it is. Well, uh, I, I saw that same video of Yankees, and uh, and I he's not my my go-to channel either. Uh, that's all I'm going to say there. But uh, uh, but but that was an interesting uh, video because I, I you know I think we all probably sat back and thought, okay, we have channels. What kind of what, where do we fall um, in, in his descriptions? Not to say that he was right, but uh, but it was fascinating to hear. And I think I think our channels and a lot of our channels and and some of the other channels in our our group, so to speak. Um, are basically presentation channels with a little bit of opinion sprinkled in there uh, for good measure because we all like to say what we like and what we don't like. And I think we're all pretty honest. Um, I, I don't think it would feel good if we weren't honest with uh, other people because we wouldn't be honest with ourselves either. But uh, but but it's basically, I mean, we're basically presentation channels. I, I get a lot of people in comments that, that thank me for providing them whatever information, whether it's a size or a answering this about a magazine or whatever whatever it is that they're looking for and for that I, I think it's really cool because it gives them a little bit of information maybe help them make a purchase or not make a purchase or or whatever it is or just drop a hateful comment who knows yeah. uh, but we're, we're basically presentation channels that's that's really all we are yeah I do I do want to answer one question before we forget or before we pass it up um, Papa's asking about our $30 gun belts and I have three of them and love them, wear them every day. I know 17 still loves his. Yep. Um, but yes, they're great belts. Yeah, so, I mean, it's just a different belt, you know, like it, you, it's comparing apples to oranges, you know, like the $30, the $30 gun belt for a, a piece of leather, a thick piece of leather, that's a pretty damn good gun belt. I mean, I have yep. had zero issues with that belt. The thing is not cracking, it's not fading, it's still got the same rigidity it had when I bought it. Um, and I have I have two of them. I have the brown one, and I also have the um, like the the rawhide one, which I actually li I didn't like it as much as the other one. Um, but then you know, like for example, the the core essentials is a thinner belt. It's thin with with a ratcheting system, so it's totally different. And then you get the cobra buckle belt, which is another completely different belt. Yeah. You know, so for me, I like all three. I I have no problem recommending any of those three belts because they're all very good. I mean, you can go out and spend, you know, like $200 on one of those Aegis belts or whatever they are. I'm not doing that. You know, uh, yeah. the first gun belt I ever got was that $30 gun belt. And I yeah. still stick by it because it's still a pretty damn good belt. Yeah, it is. Uh, my opinion on some of the other channels, you know, and, and just like what the other guys said, you know, you know, like I tune in to some of them, especially for a new gun release, but I form my own opinion. You know, and I agree, a lot of them are just like infomercials, you know, hey, sham wow, buy this, buy that. You know, I mean, I think that we're not sheeple in this group and our subscribers are not sheeple, so they're not just going to go, oh, God, he likes it, so I got to buy it. You know, and some may, but I form my own opinion. I mean, I'm a grown-ass man. I think a lot of people in here are too, women and men, and it's up to you to make your correct purchase. But I just sometimes listen to what they say and then go from there. Right. You know, I, that kind of, go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say kind of a, kind of a behind the scenes. I watch, 
uh, pretty much all the big channels. Um, and I watch them because I'm curious about what they're going to say. Um, and sometimes they get a gun before a lot of the rest of us do. And I want to see the gun. Um, I don't necessarily care about their, their opinions as much, although sometimes I do. Sometimes they say something that's interesting. But um, I, I pay attention to all the, all the big channels, especially now that I have a channel, just to, just to see what they're doing. Uh, I mean, I'll be honest with Happy. you. I'm, I snoop. I totally snoop. I, I want to know what they're doing because yeah. I can sit back and I can say, I like that or I don't like that or that's bullshit or that's great and make my own judgments from there. Yeah, yeah I think we're all educated enough where we can find the bullshit pretty quickly. Well, right. I think, um, you know, I, and I think there are still some good big gun channels out there that do solid jobs on discussing things. Um, yeah. You know, one of the things that I, one of the things I think is a huge turnoff though for me on some of these, you know, I'm just going to say it, quote unquote gun channels is, you know, the idea that, um, and I don't want to say this because, you know, I don't want us to get in a lot of hate for this, especially me, because uh, it won't affect you guys because it's not your channel. But, you know, the thing that I just can't really wrap my head around is, um, this idea that, you know, what we're providing you is something that's so amazing and so, uh, you know, out of this world valuable that you should pay us for it. Like, I don't look, I don't expect any of you guys watching my channel to ever give me anything, period. Now, if you're a large corporation with millions of dollars and or billions of dollars, you know, I'll, I'll definitely take something from you. I don't care. Or free goods. Yeah, I yeah. mean, we're all in agreement on that. We've had this discussion many times. You know, we're not going to ask our subscribers for money. Nope. Uh, we have companies send us products to review, and we're going to give an honest review if we like it or not. And, hell, to be honest with you, and I know you've done it too, I've given away tons of holsters yep. to subscribers. Yep. You know, I, you I, have you know, too. I, I gave a, I mean, bunch of, a bunch of stuff to people, you know, and, and I have no problem with that. You know, if, yeah. I, if I don't need it and I don't use it, I'd rather have somebody in, in the yes. gun community who watches my channel because it's a small channel. I'll give it to you. I don't care. I mean, if you want yeah. it and you need it, absolutely, you can have it. Yeah. But I mean, you can't I've have any away, of my guns. I've given away four, four holsters, and they were like brand new. I wore them for testing, and then passed them on. Matter of fact, uh, six holsters. Um, you know, so, hold, on get, hold, on hold on one second. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I got to go back up here. Uh, I was asked if I ever had a negligent discharge. No. We all, yeah, we were asked this last least, week. None of us have. At least not with a gun. <laughs> okay, Channel Cat Chaser is do you guys have a 2011 1911? No. Uh, uh, uh. No. no. Uh, they are nice, though. Yes, they are. Uh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Um, there was another one. Paradox, yes, you do need a Steyr, by the way. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, man, if you get that gun, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. Dude, that's the only gun that gets me super excited right now because it's so friggin' awesome. It really is. It's worth it. Totally worth it. Totally worth it. Unless unless it explodes in your hand or it sucks, then don't, don't ever talk to me because I, I don't know anything. <laughs> yeah, imagine that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I just think they're really – I think they're really getting a piece of the market finally, although be it a small piece. Um, but uh, I did notice they actually are following me on Twitter now. Who? Uh, Steyr Arms. Well, hell, they need to hook And, and I up. never you're, post anything on Twitter. <laughs> you're like their spokesperson. I don't do anything on Twitter. I, I, just, I, I just repost a message saying, hey, watch my brand new video. Yeah. And that's it. I don't really do any of that. I, I want uh, to gun gun check. Anybody have, mine was the 9C I carried today, and, but I did carry it. <laughs> With the full size mag, so got the pack here. What'd you guys carry? A uh, laptop. Hey, laptop. When I got home from work, I've been carrying this bad boy around. Will, there you go. Will is saying that he needs sights for his VP9. Um, I told you about the Heine sights, brother, and I'm not making it up. I've got the Heine sights on my 9C. I love the Heine sights. Great sights. And I've got them on the BP now. Well, I'm going to give you a different. Uh, I'm going to give you a different suggestion. Uh, True Glow TFX. And they're nice sights too. too. Uh, I've got them on pistols yeah. too. Yep, yeah, and those are day or night sights, uh, good quality. So, uh, but hiding sights are great too. Yeah, it's you know it depends on what you like. If you like more of a blacked out rear, um, you know. Some people like that, and they focus straight on the front, and that's kind of what this does. But you know, it's it's whatever you like. Um, 
real quick. Uh, oh, well, Captain Phil's asking what will be your next handgun purchase. Uh, I've already, I got something like two weeks ago and hadn't even put out a deal on it yet. So, uh, and I don't know what my next one after that will be. What about you guys? Okay, let's go ahead. Okay. Uh, nothing, nothing right now. I, I have <laughs> there nothing. I'm, I'm sort of, I, I need to purge a, a little bit and, uh, um, and kind of, kind of dial back for a little while. Plus you gotta remember, you know, in, in five or six months, shot show comes out. So I mean, you have to kind of start thinking about, yeah. um, uh, preparing for that and, and having a little bit of money to buy some of the new guns that are coming out, whatever they happen to be. So for me, I, there's there's nothing that's exciting to me right now. I mean, the the Hudson is a little bit, but I'm I'm starting to to feel like that's probably not the way I'm going to go. Yeah, and uh, just to answer your site question uh, on VP nines, you could definitely uh, do some Trijicon HDs on there. Now the next question, uh, what do I have? Uh, well, I got the Steyr L nine coming, M and P two point coming, and I bought a uh, like almost brand new Gen four Glock seventeen with night sights. That I bought, by the way, for under four hundred dollars. There you go. Nice. Uh, Balding Curious is saying he needs sights for his Sphinx, and I told him I got the excess uh, standard dot night sights. I didn't like the big dot, so I got the standard, and they work great. Uh, matter of fact, KS uh, shot my Sphinx with them on there. What did you think about them? The, the, they were fine. I mean, it was the first time I'd ever shot the gun and used those sights, so it was kind of a kind of a me, but uh, I was paying more attention to the gun than the sights, and the gun was awesome. Um, the sights seemed to do the job. Yeah. Uh, oh, and uh, Gerald and CWB like black rears. I like them too. I mean, I had a set on my old M and P. Uh, the hang on, there's a wink. Hang on, hang on. There's a wink beside those. They like oh. black rears. Oh, okay. Whatever you, whatever you like there. But go ahead, finish no, your thought. No, 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 I'm done. I got nothing else to say about it. <laughs> uh, anyone know I'm, I'm if not the CZ, touch that one. Yeah, anyone know if the CZ offered a threaded barrel for the 97B? Pistol Pete, I have never seen a threaded barrel on a 97B. I've seen the upgraded barrel bushing from Cajun Gunworks, but never a threaded barrel. Yeah, I would say I've never seen that before. Never. Uh, what is a good large gun safe to buy? Whatever you can afford. Right. Period. Uh, spend, as go, much as, spend as much as you can on a good quality safe. I'll go out there and say Liberty Fat Boy and Fat Boy Junior. So in other words, get a second mortgage. Well, <laughs> no, they're great. Everybody can afford that much, but, uh, but you get the best safe you can afford. He's saying a large safe. You, you know, the Fat Boy Juniors are very reasonable. You just have to look around. They have sales on them. And they got lifetime warranties. You know, if your house catches on fire, there's all kinds of replacements. They'll actually give you a new safe. I mean, it's for what you pay for it. It's a great safe. Um, who makes regular sites for the Sphinx? I have no idea. Right. <laughs> there's only like three companies who make them. Uh, this is what you're going to run into with this pistol, uh, bald and curious. Uh, the only ones I've seen is the Excess Big Dots. There's another company you can send the slide to, and they'll put them on. Uh, it is a bright front uh, and then a rear. But one thing that you can buy for that, you can Google it, and you can put it on yourself, is you can get a fiber optic front. It's 49 bucks, I think, and it screws right on, and it's made for the Sphinx. So pull up Sphinx fiber optic front sight. And I know you like fiber optics, so that's probably the one that you can go with. Uh, let's see here. Did we miss? Like your wife. That's okay. everybody. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, Liberty's good stuff. Liberties are awesome. Yeah. Come on. Go ahead, man. Cricket. Crickets. Uh, I, I got nothing else, especially on safes. Uh, buy the best you can. Um, so uh, we probably ought to. We've got about seven minutes left. Start kind of wrapping things up. Yep. 
Any questions that anybody has that had that hadn't gotten out? What do you guys have coming up? Well, I have a challenge video. Uh, my good buddy, 1776, challenged me to a uh, to a face off, so to speak, uh, between the Steyr M9A1 and the CZP10C. And I will tell all of you guys right here, so you can you have evidence to this. I had really thought to put away the P10 for quite some time because I think people eventually are going to get tired of it, especially on my channel. But I had to accept that challenge because I was very excited to get the share out and do it again. And that was a pleasure to film. It's ready to go. It'll be out on Saturday. So excited for that. Gerald, I saw that. Um, I'm getting sleepy. I, are you saying you're bored of me talking or I look sleepy? Either way, it's probably true. Uh, but uh, a couple of other a couple of other videos coming out um, and a couple of products on the way. So I'm excited about that. More to come. Mm -hmm. about about you? you first. Okay. Uh, I will be shooting the VP9 plus fives. I know I've been saying that, but I'm going to really put those things to the test and try them. I've got a steel shot challenge that I am doing this Sunday uh, with um, seven up, three down, and um, another buddy. And so we're going to do that. And um, I've got some other review stuff. Um, but yeah, I got a pile of stuff on the table. So, and I've got to do the other release of something. And that's what I have coming up. Cool. Very good. Um, if I get my other handguns very soon, I'm going to obviously do tabletops on them. Then I'm going to do some shooting videos with them and uh, some care, some comparison stuff. I've got a, a Vetter belt to do a review on. I still got the uh, the Klinger pocket holster to do a review on. Uh, Corey Essentials is sending me their tactical belt, so I want to take a look at that uh, and see what that looks like. Um, you know, just... Yeah, basic stuff like that, you know, um, nothing too fancy. And I did see that comment from Young Guns. He's talking about that Caracal F. I've only found it being sold by one, um, I guess, one online store. Uh, they, I guess it was a limited run, so they're hard to come by. But I did look at it. It does it does resemble like a Steyr and a P10 combined, actually. So that might be, that That I would consider because it's very reasonable. You know, it's, it's like, uh, I think maybe five and change as opposed to $895 or something, so. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, and real quick, and I know um, some people on this chat may have them, but the the A Rex, uh, if you own an A Rex or you purchase an A Rex or whatever, they're actually giving free holsters. Uh, if anyone's needing a holster or has an A Rex, uh, you can contact them and they'll give you a free holster. So that's a pretty cool deal. Well, that's pretty cool. What kind of so, holster? You know. Yeah, it's a paddle. It says A Rex on the side, but it looks kind of like Kydex on the outside. Uh, might be thermal form, but it's a paddle type, and they're giving it to you for free, and they're paying the shipping, so they just want to tell their customers thank you. So I thought that was really cool. That's cool. Yeah, um, I think that's about it. You know, like I said, if something gets released in the fall with Walther, you bet I'm going to get one. So that's you know that's a definite. Um, I actually need to take out the PPQ. I haven't I haven't even carried that in a while uh, or shot it, so I really should shoot it. Um, and run it a little bit and uh that's about it i might actually do a comparison on the po1 and the po7 shooting um because I, again i haven't shot these i haven't shot a hammer fired gun in a while and i gotta i gotta get behind this one again um yeah. just, just so i don't lose it uh and then channel cats asking do you watch reviews like nothing nothing fancy and i think we all kind of watch them but yeah I, I watch them but i fast forward a lot yeah 40 <laughs> you know and and Wicked's correct. A forty minute review review on a dive watch or a knife is way too long for me. I can't yeah. hang around. I was actually watching his uh, his Gen Five review last night, and it, I think it was forty one minutes or something like that. And I maybe watched five minutes of it. I just wanted to see the beginning of what he had to say, the middle. It went dead. It did go dead. KS, you have a question. What pistol do you shoot the best? Yeah, teen year I went, I think. Um, so uh, to be honest with you, Captain, and don't tell anybody, 
uh, probably Glocks, and and simply for the fact that I've got ten thousand rounds behind Glocks over over almost twenty years of shooting them. Uh, but uh, aside from a Glock, the next best thing would be a VP9. I, I would imagine uh, those would probably be my top. P10 is pretty close, but uh, Glocks. Okay, and uh, let's see. No, I guess Channel Cat's asking um, a watch that I wear. Uh, I have a bunch of watches. Um, I have Invectas, Casios, um, a Rolex. I have other. I have other watches. I did a watch video way back when. If you want to go check it out. You guys hear me? Yep. Yeah. Did yep. I go out before? Or? Yeah, you went. You yeah, broke up time. and left. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, so so I'll, I'll I'll start this off. Everybody, thank you as always. We appreciate you guys spending your hard-earned time with us and um, and sharing your thoughts. And we always learn things from you. And it's uh, it's always a pleasure to get to know you guys. And uh, so we appreciate it. Look forward to it next week. Yeah, we definitely appreciate it so much. Um, you know, if it wasn't for y'all, we wouldn't have a chat. So we definitely appreciate y'all uh, chiming in and great questions. Um, and we look forward to it every week. So thank y'all very much. Yeah. And, uh, you know, for me, guys, thanks a lot. Thanks for coming to the channel and listening to us talk and rant about great stuff called guns. Uh, thanks to all the thumbs down. Um, one day you should come on our chat and identify yourself so we can talk to you and find out what you don't like. That'd be great. Yeah, uh, right. Yeah. Well, thank y'all so much. We appreciate y'all. Later. Carry on. <laughs>